Now you can see, we said, all right, we got from the stage of being a problem, and we're like, what the, what do we do with this? Until such a point as we reduced it into a problem that we we're very comfortable with, more or less anyway. Like, you've got some algebraic crunching here to do. So you're gonna expand this, get another non-monic, messy quadratic. Eventually you're gonna have a quadratic that equals to zero. What did you get? It's got like a, it must be 5x squared something, right? Plus, sorry? 121. Okay, now when you get to this point, when you get to this point, it does look messy, but in fact some of the numbers will help you realize actually there's a very nice neat factorization with this, right? Uh, it looks like it's going to be 5x minus 11. Sorry, 5x minus... Oh, it was 5x minus 11, yep. And x minus 11, yeah? That's what gives you that um, 121. That's equal to zero. So as usual, you look at that and you say, I know what to do with this. If either one of these is zero, then I get the whole thing being zero. So therefore, I have uh, an answer here. That's two and a fifth. And I also have an answer here, okay? Now, I said before, hey, watch out. Because as we progress from line one to line five, we changed the problem. We made it workable, but we also adjusted it and we potentially added more solutions in. Now, one of the ways that you can check uh, whether you've gone from something which doesn't have solutions to something that does is to look for domain restrictions. I've warned you about this before, but I deliberately didn't say it to see if you would twig like, ooh, that's a danger, okay? So have a look, see these three functions that make up the original problem. Each one has a domain restriction. Let's start with this one. The square root of x normally has a domain restriction of what? x is greater than or equal to 0. Now, the square root of x plus 5 is not the same as the square root of x. It's moved around. Which way has it gone? It's gone to the left 5 units. So it's no longer x is greater than 0. It's x is greater than, yeah, 5 units to the left. So that's the restriction you get from this guy. Okay. These all have restrictions that are similar. Uh, this one will be x is greater than or equal to just positive 2. And this one is x is greater than or equal to 6 on 5. So when you have a look at these, right, which one starts furthest to the left? This guy starts furthest to the left, right? And then in order, it looks like this one would come next. And then this one comes last. But all three need to exist together in order for this to have any meaning. So therefore, the one that really matters is this guy. Yeah? Now, when you look at that for the first thing, it looks sort of okay. Because that's 2.2 .2 and that's 11. So on domain restriction grounds, everything looks clear. However, you remember I mentioned we squared not once, but twice. So I'm still suspicious. Domain restrictions are not the only things that can cause problems. So therefore, this is a bit awkward, but there's no real way to get around it. And it's kind of okay, because there are only two solutions. You have to test. Um, I'm not going to expect you to know what these graphs look like. Well, actually, you can probably graph that, but that's just some kind of garbled mess. So how am I going to test this quickly? The most efficient way is just to substitute in. Okay? Let's try 11, because that's a whole number, so that's fairly easy. What's going to happen over here on the left hand side. You're going to get the square root of 16 plus the square root of 9. So 4 plus 3 is 7. That's what I'm hoping for. Let's try it on the right hand side. The square root of 55 minus 6 is the square root of 49. That checks out, doesn't it? So this guy looks good. Okay. Now 11 over 5, I do not expect you to try and work this out in your head. So you reach for your calculator, and when you test this, what does the left hand side equal? Uh, like 3.3 3, or something. 3, you're going to get some decimal rubbish, that's fine, okay. What does the right hand side equal? It's like 2.3. Okay, so just simply by, it's a, it's a bit quick and dirty, but it works, right? We've discovered this guy is actually a bit of a dud. Okay? And where did it come from? It came from this process here. Every time you square, you add in the chance for more solutions to exist. Okay? Uh, in fact, a little bit of homework for you. <coughs> Excuse me. Go ahead, run into Desmos, pop this in, see what the graph looks like. Okay? And pop this in, see what the graph looks like. And you will find the one and one only solution right here. But then, if you compare that to 
this slide here is when we finished squaring. Okay, this slide here. Do you see why it's not that surprising that you would expect two solutions out of this? Because what's the right-hand side? What shape is it? It's a parabola. What shape is this? It's another parabola. Well, not that surprising if I just make up some random parabolas. Here's one, and here's another one. Well, it's not that surprising that you would find two solutions. You've made the shapes more complicated. Okay.